What's up, guys? Welcome to B-Tech. I'm your nerd, Mike, and we got something a little different for you today. Let's get to it. Here we are, guys. We're playing PC Building Simulator 2. What? There's a PC building simulator game? Yes, there is. Right about the time where they were doing farming simulator and all these other simulator games, power wash simulator. Yes, there's a PC building simulator. Two. So that means there was a one. I played a lot of the, of the first one, thoroughly enjoyed it, but here we are with the second one. I honestly think this is a great platform to learn about computers and how to build computers. So we have career and we have free build. This is the first time I've even opened up this game. I played the demo, I played the beta when it was out, but oh, this is the actual official release. And so I'm I'm excited. We're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna nerd out. That's what we're gonna do with Nerd Mike. We're gonna nerd out. First things first, though, we're not going to do career. We're going to go into free build because I, I want to go over PC computer parts together with you guys and give a rundown and explanation of what each part of a computer does and the basics of them. Here we are. Welcome to free build. In this mode, you can build your dream PC and export it to share it with others. And thank you, gift is ready. Build PC has been left for you to import. You collect from storage. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, the sensitivity is so high. Mouse. Okay, I hope I don't get copyright striked for this. You know what? Just in case, I'm going to turn off the music and I'll add my own music on top so it's not completely bare. Okay, there's several computers here already. Just stock computers. Cool. And this is the painting area. So you can like modify and add like specific paint jobs to parts of the computer as far as I know from the beta. All right, we are going to, let's see. Let's see, bitch. case modding, we got case modding. Ah, I can choose build mode, water cooling and CPU delitting. We can CPU delit, Jesus Christ. Okay, but for now we're just gonna do build mode. Uh, storage keep PCs where you're not working on them more than that it allows you to import PCs okay no PCs in storage okay import okay uh inventory let's take it okay here we are so we have all the parts of a computer we have a case or let's start from the top we got CPUs we got CPU cooling because the CPU produces a lot of heat that it's going to be need to cool off or else it'll melt itself or the PC will just shut itself down before any of that happens. Motherboards, cool. We got memory, we got graphics cards. We have storage, power supplies. We got uh, cables that you're gonna need to connect all the stuff together. Case fans and case storage. So the main components of a CPU or a CPU, the main components of a computer are the motherboard, CPU, and graphics cards. Those are the three most expensive parts generally and the most important ones. Without any of these three and your computer won't run. Well, really without any of the other ones, your computer won't run either, but you can't cheap out on these things. So. First of all, first of all, first of all, the motherboard is kind of like what the name suggests. It's a mother of boards or it connects everything together. Everything hookups to the motherboard in order to be able to talk to each other. It's almost like a central hub or a highway or a bus stop or whatever for everything. This is where everything goes plugged into. Then we have our CPUs. The CPUs, a lot of people like to call it like the brain of the computer, which is pretty, pretty accurate, pretty accurate to say. 
So this is what makes all the processes run on your specific computer, what makes everything tick. That's why it has frequency. We call this usually the clock. Then we have the graphics card. This is how you have video. This is how you can see on your monitor what's going on. It processes video information or it processes digital information to turn it into video for us to see. Now, a little caveat there, you don't always need a discrete GPU. A discrete GPU is a separate physical graphics card apart from sometimes the CPUs will actually come with integrated graphics, which means that you don't need a graphics card in order for it to actually work because the graphics there's a graphics processor on the cpu itself not all cpus do this most intel cpus do this though most there's some series or there's there's some models that don't support graphics on the cpu okay and then we have the memory so this is the ram or random access memory this is more of a short-term memory. This is stuff that is stored temporarily in order so the computer can go back to it quickly. That, that's why Windows or certain programs pop up real quick whenever you open them because of the RAM. It stores it every single time you boot up your PC, it RAM starts working and it starts caching it to, to the memory in order for you to be able to get to those things quickly. Once you shut it off, it, com it completely decaches or it completely gets rid of all the cache that and all the mem short term memory it stored and it resets itself every single time you boot up the PC, which is why you have storage or this, this kind of storage is a bit slower than RAM but still nowadays it's super fast and it's where you do your long term long term memory as in like where you store documents video games softwares all that kind of stuff that those are your two i guess quote unquote type of memories but really one is storage and one is actual memory cool next thing would be power supply this is what's gonna power your whole freaking computer. Depending on what stuff, what components that you choose, the CPU has a certain amount of power that it needs in order for it to function. So does the graphics card. So if we just go look, let's see, wattage, 58 watts right here. 58 watts, 51 watts. As you go up the ladder, let me, let's see, 5800. 5800x is what i have in my rig right now 105 watts tdp and so they and then if you add a graphics card to it's at a 3070 which is what i have rtx 3070 let's see uh it's about 220 or 294 depending on what skew you have about 300 watts so you add those together and you quickly are going to need at least a 400 watt uh, power supply at the very least but that's not even including the motherboard which also takes wattage and your ram takes watts, your storage takes watts. all of that takes up watts so you want to make sure you have a beefy enough power supply to support everything that you're putting in there that includes like extra fans extra rgb extra leds all that kind of stuff which we can move on to our cpu cooler CPU cooler is this what, as its name is, it's to cool the CPU. And pretty much that's the only job. We have fan coolers, which is just a fan on a heat sink, making thermal, con making contact with the IHS of the CPU or making contact with the CPU itself to dissipate heat into the metal. And then a fan blows the heat off, blows the heat to cool it. Or we can go with AI. We can go with water cooling. Now we have like custom AIOs, or let's see, AIOs. There we go. Now we have like these. These are water coolers. This is a radiator hooked up with tubes, which the same concept it goes hooked up to the CPU in order to dissipate heat, but instead it runs water through the tubes in order to cool the CPU. And then 
we have case fans. We need fans in order to move heat inside the case in order for all the components to be cooled and to dissipate heat so it doesn't get trapped in this box. So that's really important. And thus, those are the pieces of to build a computer. Up apart from the case where you that's where you stick everything together in. And so we're going to build a computer and we're going to do it. Uh, I'm not going to pay too much attention on price. We're just going to build something, something normal, something basic in order to uh, show exactly what all these, how all these parts go together. So let's see. Uh, I like coarse air. So we're going to, if I can spell, we're going to go with coarse air. We're going to go with this white one. Yeah. The IQ 220T RGB airflow white. Boom. There you go. We got it in there and it has one fan. Photos and export. Okay, cool. I don't. Here is the um, the case where we're going to put all our components in. It's a mid tower case, meaning that it is there's <laughs> meaning that there's large cases and smaller cases. And so here we have the side panel to plot the that we're going to remove right now to reveal the inside of it. We have one fan installed in there. Typically, when you buy a case, it'll it, it'll probably come with at least like one or two fans in there that you can either keep or swap out for better ones. On this top part, we have a dust filter right there, and all these holes are so we can mount fans or uh, radiators. Then we have this front panel we can remove like there, and we have another dust filter. And here's the fan that we're we have in there gonna remove it because I don't want it in there and here you can see slots for three fans there's different types of uh, sizes for fans but we'll get into that later uh, the power supply goes right underneath here and these are our PCIe slots which we'll get into as well remove the back cover we have two SSD trays right there that we can remove or keep and we have our hard drive case right there as well so we're gonna remove that case boom that way we don't need anymore and there's a dust filter as well there so that way no so it could prevent as much dust as possible from getting into the system boom and this is our uh probably in a fan hub so let's see yeah that looks like a fan hub which will be connected to connect all of our fans onto this little hub and this hub connects to our computer to the motherboard in order to be able to adjust all the fan speeds through the computer okay so let's find our motherboard let's see what mo we found the case what motherboard do we want so this is where it's going to be important which motherboard you choose. You got to decide whether you're going Intel or AMD and then what generation you're going. So because here we have for AMD, we have AM4 and in present time, then there's a new what they call a socket, which is like a new style of CPU and it is am5 at least for amd which changes the complete shape so you cannot fit an am5 cpu into an am4 socket it has to be compatible it has to be exactly the same similarly similarly for um intel this is lga 1151 this is lga 1200 but right now we're at lga 1700 so that just means that uh, you're going to have to be very careful to make sure you get the CPU that goes with that particular socket. So we're going to, for fun, we're going to go with a, all these are NZXTs. Oh, shoot. Do they not have any, another one? Any other white ones? That might be the only ones. I might have to unlock stuff by playing the game. All right, we'll go with NZXT. We'll go with NZXT. It's okay. We'll go with AM4 because that's what I have and I'm needy. Actually, we'll go with uh, the Z590 because that's what my girlfriend hangs. Okay. And now installing it. 
it's so much easier to install in a video game than in actual real life but i would not install it just a caveat i would not install the motherboard like this right now into the case this is just because it's a video game i would put it like in my previous video on top of the motherboard box and then i would add the cpu the ram and the storage before i moved on and actually put it in and even the fan cooler if our cpu cooler if, it, if i'm not water cooling i would put it in there before i even put the motherboard in here but again it's just demonstration purposes so let's choose a uh, storage so we have three kinds of storage we have uh hard drives ssds and nvmes so the difference between them essentially this is slow this is fast fastest that's all you gotta know most cases you're gonna be rocking nvmes nvmes cost the same price as ssds if not sometimes cheaper and they're way faster than ssds so always try to opt for an nvme especially if your motherboard supports it so in this case this has an nvme spot right there let's see does it have mono and it has two spots for for m.2s m.2 nvme nvme is the architecture for the uh, storage and m.2 is the actual physical uh socket so we're gonna install in this top one right here boom right there there's our storage kingston very nice Boom. so that's storage and now let's do let's do our cpu which one did i do oh z590 okay i did intel intel 1200 okay so cpu uh, lga 1200 nice it looks like it already sorted it out for me Intel pentium we're going with let's go with an i7 i7 11 700k yes let's go with that boop boop yep 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 i like it and then we gotta open up these tabs for the ram these black tabs and let's see what ram do we want ram we want ram that's rgb because i like rgb and i'm needy so that's what we're gonna do uh yeah let's do let's do team group or is there is there yeah hyperx fury that's what i yeah yeah, yeah. let's do that let's do hyperx fury uh third th yes i need four i need two of these just two two a gigs and typically you do one there and then you do another one you so depending on the motherboard let me back this out depending on the motherboard and the motherboard manual it'll tell you which slots you're supposed to put the ram in first if, depending if you're doing one two or four sticks a good point of reference is to note that usually the the way it'll do it they'll have it on the outside and the second slot right there that's those are the two slots that will have you put in put ram in if you have um just two if you have all four then just put them all in there typically also uh computers nowadays are uh, will take 16 gigs i mean the cheapest ones are eight gigs for just general office stuff but if you're gaming out my recommendation is to do 16 gigs minimum as games are taking more ram or using up more ram and more ram for a content creator 32 minimum or 64 depending on your uh software but yeah so we got the ram in there we got the cpu in there next thing would be to connect the uh cpu cooler but 
if I'm doing since I'm gonna do a fan cooler, I wanna be able to make sure I'm able to put the put these fans up here. So before I I would put the motherboard in here with the CPU cooler already on there and stuff, before I even put the motherboard in here, I would double check to make sure it's not gonna get in my way to access this top part here. This because this is where I'm gonna have to mount fans on as well. So that's one thing to note. And another thing to note is that there's a space in the top left up here. We gotta we gotta get powered up to here. To this, this is CPU power. We gotta get power up here. So you want to make sure you run a cable in there first. That way, it's not a hassle to plug it plug it in there. So nothing else gets in the way. So those are kind of some stuff that you just learned from experience that I can't really show you in this video game, but those are just some tips if you are building your own computer okay and let's see all right install we're gonna install these top fans first that way we don't have to worry about the cpu cooler getting in the way although it's a video game so it probably wouldn't get in the way anyway what fans do we want we're just gonna go with corsair just kidding we're not gonna go yes we are gonna go with corsair scat's belt uh, we'll do well we're going for a white so we're gonna get these the QL 120 RGBs yeah right here one and we're gonna get another one two and yes they are expensive and like you see oh they're not connecting it to the hub what they actually went and connected it okay they connected it down here to the uh, motherboard fan headers okay whatever not what i would have done but that works i guess uh yeah so they connected it on to the motherboard the motherboard you typically has like four headers for fans which means four plugs for fans to plug into as well as uh probably about two argb headers which is pretty much just plugs for for the rgb of these fans or anything anything that holds rgb cool all right we got that and then we can put another fan in the back right here typically so we have three fans um three fans pushing air out and then we're gonna have three fans pulling air in that way we have a balanced um balanced flow of air so or balanced pressure of air because if we only had all the all if we had fans a bunch of fans pushing air out then that would be negative pressure if we have a bunch of fans pulling air in that'd be positive pressure but the but typically the best is to have balanced pressure which is an even amount going in and out <clears throat> so next things next thing we're gonna go for her cpu cooler now that we have those fans that this cooler might get in the way we're going to go i want oh the arctic freezer that's a good brand do you wonder we're going with white so we're gonna go all white all white all white guess this is it i'm pretty sure i do have the oh that was gonna be a big big mistake guys always apply thermal pest to your cpu i traditionally like to do the x like that like that just to make sure all your bases are covered whenever you uh whenever to whenever you put the cooler down this paste is pretty much so it so the metal from the cpu transfers the heat to the cpu heat the cpu cooler heat sink because without this then it's just going to be metal on metal not transferring anything like it's just going to get hot together they're not really like there's there's no point of this and bloop and so we can turn this way or that way but we're gonna do it this way 
boom just like that so air can just flow from right to left boom just like that and then i'm going to add more fans more more corsair fans because i like corsair my lady loves corsair boom we're adding one 20 millimeter fans oh this cable is okay Cable manage better than this game, please. This is absolutely horrendous, but it's okay. There we go. And it's not even using the fat hub. What's the point of the fat hub if you don't use it? Come on, game. Get it together. All right. We got all of our fans in there. We got six fans in there and the CPU cooler. Now all we need is the graphics card. All right, let's, let's let's see if I can zoom in a little bit to the okay, zooms into the CPU, but I want to zoom in to the motherboard. Okay, it's a little hard to see, but these slots right here, these are called PCIe slots. Um, the one with the gray traditionally will be the one you put your graphics card in. This is an X16. X16 is the size or the bandwidth of your of the lane so kind of like uh think of a like a faucet a water faucet or the, your sink whenever you open up the handle a lot of water passes through the x16 tells you how big the pipe is the bigger the pipe the more water will flow through it right so the same thing but with data so it's an x16 size Slot. and that's so far at least with consumer grade um computers 16 is the biggest and so this is the biggest faucet that you have for data transfer which is why the the graphics card goes into that slot this bottom slot is is said that when it's occupied then it then both of these run at x8 which is also perfectly a good amount of bandwidth enough for to for graphics cards so sometimes back or before before i even started getting into computers it would be very common for people to add two of the same graphics cards and connect them together by putting them on by putting them in these slots in this top slot in this bottom slot and then using a bridge a little token that goes on them in order to uh, bridge them and get double the graphics processing power. People used to do that. Um, it's not as common anymore, mostly because the companies have uh, kind of not kept up with that technology and, and don't support it anymore. But anyway, and then you have these smaller slots, which are either X1, X4, or um, yeah, X1 or X4. And they are for extra peripherals like a, like a USB hub that you, you can buy cards that you can add, expand and put more USBs than what just comes on your motherboard. Or it could be a Wi-Fi card or if it could be a sound card, it could be a multitude of things. Uh, but yeah, those are that's why they're called expansion slots to expand on your computer. Just extra cards to put in there. Uh, but yeah. So now we're going to add, we're going to add the graphics card. So we're going to take this slot off because usually it's going to be a two slot card. I want to go for a 37. We're going for a 37 because that's the card I got. And I need to go to graphics cards, 3070. So for graphics cards, it's not all that crazy to to mix and match cards as in like put an nvidia card into an amd system or an MV in or an amd like just it doesn't matter for graphics cards like it does for cpu and motherboard so you can most of the time you feel free to pick whichever graphics card you want but do your research you don't want to bottleneck your cpu or spend like so much money on your graphics card but your cpu is a little puny little punk and it just your computer isn't running fast enough because you decided to put all your money into the graphics card and not enough spread around to your cpu ram and other configurations 
So we're gonna go with the tradition with the NVIDIA. We're gonna go with the Founders Edition. Founders Edition just means it's made by NVIDIA. Like this is their card. Boom. Just in there. Very nice. Okay. And then we're gonna install the power supply. Oh, just because I don't like thinking. Or let's see, will this tell me? Will this tell me how much power I got? How much power I got? Nope, I have to do that all in my head. Well, just to be safe, we're gonna put an 800 watt power supply in there. Because the TDP of the graphics card is like 300. The CPU was like a 180, something like that. Maybe, no, it was less 110, I think. Uh, 105 watts, so that's about 400 watts already. But that's not including overclocking and memory. Uh, this doesn't tell me how much. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna go with the 800 watts, because why not? We're guesstimating. Normally, I would use a website to calculate everything that I have on there, but you know, it's okay. And there's also. Uh, different types of power supplies as in um, like sizes so just make sure you go for a regular ATX power supply that's why it says size ATX because there's a um, small form factor power supplies so that'd be SFF SFF okay okay all right you just wanted to troll me today is there only ATX is there only ATX power supplies? Do we not have small form factor power supplies? Uh, I guess not. Okay, whatever. Just game work with me plus. Alright. I'm going with the 850. Why not? Let's go for that. Corsair RMX 850. Eight, the RMX series is a good series. Uh, you sh I could have gone with the white power supply. You know what? We're going with the white power supply. Oh my gosh. It auto put all the good. Now I have to undo all this mess. Um, uh, yeah, CPU power. I mean that. Yes. Okay. Install. There, we, there should be white power supplies. Yeah. 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 Cooler master. That'll work. There's white Corsair, uh, there's white Corsair power supplies, but whatever. Dang, yeah, that's what I knew. I unplugged something that I shouldn't have. Cool. Then we can choose cables. We can we can choose our cables. We can choose our cables. Do we want cables? Yeah, we want cables. We want to be extra. Uh, let's do yeah, ribbon. Okay, but that means I have to remove all the cables. Okay, remove all the cables. I'm just having fun with it at this point. I promise you. I'm, I'm putting custom... Yeah, yeah, ribbon cables. Yeah, put them in there. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Looks so nice, so fresh, so clean. Not the way that they routed the cables, but whatever. Who cares? Um, okay. Now to put all this stuff back in there. Okay, dust filter. Dust filter. Put the dust filter in there. I took the dust filter back out. Put the dust filter back in there. And then dust filter again. The front. And then we have... Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need to put this back in there, but I guess we can just because why not? Uh, front panel, yes. Side panel, yes. The other side panel, yes. Now we have a fully functioning PC. Not yet. You thought we were done. We're not done. We have to put an. We have to put a flash drive in here. Fine. In order to be able to install the software so now wait 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 wait, wait. Mm -hmm. power oh look at that looks nice no OS found on USB person job with it <sighs> 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 
for OS cloning USB drive, USB drive with me. Oh, I'm smart. There we go. Take, give me this. All right, got to turn back off and turn it back on. There we go. There you go. Nice. Now we're going to add our favorite program, lighting. And I wish it was actually this easy to install. We're going to select all. I'm going to do static. We're going to do... Ooh. Ooh. Sky blue. That's cool. I like blue. Green is cool too, though. Green is cool too. But there you have it. There you have it, guys. This is how you build a basic computer in a video game. I Mostly, it was just to familiarize yourself with all the parts of a computer. And this is an easy and fun way and non-destructive way <laughs> and free eh, if you have to pay for the game. But, but essentially, this is like the a good way of learning how can how to build computers and maybe we'll we'll touch up on this game we'll touch on career mode and see see what what it has to offer played the first one had a tons of fun i wonder if the the this second one's gonna be good actually before before just before i'm up before we head out let's see what can we mod we're gonna have fun with these can i Oh, we can apply spray paint. Okay, okay, okay. Let's tag it up. Let's tag it up. Oh, you know what? Instead of white, let's do cyan. Yes, look at that. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. This is so cool. Look at that. Boom. Cyan. Cyan. Bam. Obviously, you would never paint this thing while the components are in there please do not do as i do this is a video game do not paint while your components are in there do not do it you do this with an empty case all right that's that's how you do that that's cool that's really cool i like that i like that a lot nice <laughs> and then we can add stickers Oh, we can apply on glass. Yes. Shapes. We got warning signs. Warning, guys. Oh, my gosh. It's huge. Yeah. Look. Warning. This computer is too hot. <laughs> Anyways, thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.